Ah, uh, I think it's time for a power bank video. And now it's pound land's turn to introduce a one pound power bank, and they're lagging a wee bit behind Pound World, who had a rocky start with their uh, power banks, because the first power banks that Pound World introduced were a wee bit shady, and the latter ones they introduced were a lot better. And I'm afraid that Pound Land has also got off to a rocky start with their first power banks. Um, so I bought two of them. They're under the SignalX brand, and the first one uh, I got was this purple one, and it was dead on arrival. And by dead on arrival, let me get the meter here. So let's uh, power the meter up, bring it into shot, and uh, measure the voltage across this cell. So onto negative and onto positive. And I'm getting zero. Zilch. Nothing at all. So um, you'd think, well, hmm, under those circumstances, if a, a lithium cell has been completely discharged, because this isn't a protected lithium cell, it's just a bare standard lithium cell, and if it's been discharged to that level, the last thing you want to do is put a charge into it. So if you do plug a, a charger into it, let's see what sort of current flows. Uh, 100 milliamps, uh, it is trying to put a charge into this. Let's measure the voltage across it. And keep in mind that anybody uh, who brought one of these home and uh, tried plugging something into it and it didn't work, then the first thing I do is put it under charge. So this thing is now actually putting a charge. It's up to about 1.27, 1.28. It's creeping up. So I'm just going to leave that sitting there charging for a moment because um, I want to see, I might actually even try fully charging that and just see what capacity it goes to. However, uh, the little circuit board, oh, I've just dropped the meter. The little circuit board inside contains a very simple circuit. It contains, uh, in fact, you know, I, I kind of want to, yeah, I'll show you that afterwards. Uh, here's the circuit. It contains an MP3401. Uh, and I tried looking for the data sheet in this. All I found was this image, which is all you really need. And interestingly, uh, when this thing has fully discharged, well, here's the, st the statistics. When it discharges, it cuts off at 2.93 volts, which is good, just below 3 volts, and it really does cut off. It doesn't do that thing with the early um, power banks where it would leave the inductor in circuit but stop using the boost circuit. It does have the output physically switched through the chip, so it does kill the output completely. And um, it charges about 600 milliamps. That's usually set by a resistor in these, although it may be fixed on this one. I see a resistor here, but I get the feeling that is purely, given its location, I get the feeling that's a snubber network, just purely to protect the transistor inside. And the only other circuitry on this um, is the inductor and a capacitor on the battery, across the battery, a capacitor across the output and a capa capacitor across the input and a couple of LEDs, that's it. Um, very, very simple circuit. Um, so let's see how this is doing. Let's see how it's faring. I don't see the little LED on it yet. I want to see if it does actually have a go at trying to uh, charge it up completely, which is a terrible idea probably. It's now up to 1.2 volts. Yeah, um, okay, so you know what? I'm going to I'm going to actually give that a go and see if it uh, charges charges it up to the top. But let's uh, initially let's uh, see how that holds the voltage when I take it off. I wonder if it's the cell that's faulty, or it's the circuit. 1.59, 1.57, 1.56. It's falling away in its own very quickly now. Is that the cell, or is that the actual control circuit that's doing that? Let's hike this out. I should say, this is one of the easiest uh, I've ever come across for getting the circuits out. Where are a pair of snips? Let's use the precious Zuron for this. The cable, incidentally, is the silicon cable, which is quite nice. So let's see if the voltage is still tumbling down on this, uh, on this cell. Uh, it's, yeah, it is kind of falling, isn't it? Is it going to go down? Yeah, it is. It's, I think this is a bad cell, and that's uh, where the problem lies. However, uh, this one, I decided to give it a go, and uh, I, I ran it completely flat, 
and then I charged it up fully and I'm going to have to do that test again because according to the um, the uh, Q, I can never pronounce this, Kawaisai, K-E-W-E-I-S-I. This is a little unit you can buy on eBay and it basically monitors the milliamp power charge that goes into something. It said the charge that went into this is 281 milliamps. Now it says on the side of it that it's a, a 1,200 milliamp uh, unit. It says on the side of the cells, 1,200 milliamp hour. But um, uh, yeah, it came up at 281 milliamp hour before the charge terminates and the voltage was just short of 4.2 volts. So I'm uh, not sure about that. Now I want to actually see what the quiescent current of this is and the best way to do that, or should I say the easiest way to do that, is to use one of these cheapy dinky meters. One of the nice things about these little cheapy meters, well, this is the one I've got crocodile clips on which makes it kind of easy. So let's uh, set my uh, power supply to 4 point, well, let's set it to about 4 volts. Oh, blimey, that's, uh, that's quite high. Uh, 4 volts, I've been testing something much higher voltage recently. Um, okay, that's it set to 4 volts. Let's prove that, let's stick it on here. It's roughly 4 volts, it's not going to be super dead accurate. 3.9, that'll do. That was equivalent to, say, a, a typical lithium cell connected to this. So let's uh, connect it to it. And I'll put the current meter in line. As I was saying, one of the main advantages of these little dinky meters is that, you know, you don't have to change leads to go to the lower current settings, but that's also a huge disadvantage. It means that if you're new to using these meters, and I keep saying I'm going to do a review of these meters, and I never do it because I've got quite a few of them sitting here, and I've just never actually done that because I keep thinking I'm going to have to do a whole load of tests them, and I keep putting it off and putting it off, but I will do that at some point. What I will say is that these meters are absolutely fine for just, you know, if you want to get started, get one of these meters. Don't use it in the mains. Don't try and poke about in main sockets with it. It's not really rated for that type of use. Certainly not your consumer unit or distribution board. But the main weakness of them, uh, as well as their strong point, is the fact that, you know, you can turn this straight to a current setting. When you do, it poses a dead short across these leads. And if you've got it connected across a battery, something will blow and it'll probably be the fuse inside this if, if there is one. So let's uh, connect uh, positive to here. In fact, let's uh, connect positive to the meter and then to there and see if we can get the quiescent current of this. It'll usually start with a burst. This is where the pound world ones uh, just died instantly. They just went thermonuclear. Oh God, I hope it's not 1.7 milliamps. Really? No. That would... That would kill a battery quite quickly. 1.7 milliamps. Now, is that the chip that's drawing that current? Or is it going to be one of those little capacitors, as we've experienced in the past, that little capacitors can uh, do that? Uh, another thing I have to keep in mind here, the should be capacitor on here to actually allow for that, is that sometimes when you put a meter in series and this has got a certain level of impedance, it can actually uh, skew the operation of the circuit. The circuit is wanting to drive this little inductor directly from the battery and it might not be, a, be achieving its 5 volt output um, on the output and therefore it, it just keeps trying to run. So that could allow for that current. I think I'm going to have to test this with an actual... Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to do here to, uh, to test that properly. But that's a bit odd. I might even whip the circuit board out of here and try it. I can't attempt to do that right now, except I want to do the other test in it. How annoying. Right, uh, I shall do those tests and I shall... Anything uh, I've not covered now, I'll leave a comment uh, down below in the description. So, um... Yes. So... Certainly they do seem to have a low capacity, the, their capacity, this one did come with a charge in it so it was working but the capacity is odd. I'm going to fully discharge that and recharge it and just see what happens. This one was dead out the packet so it's a shame really because otherwise you know if they, they they don't have a high quiescent current like that one's showing, it could be the capacitors. Mm, I'm not sure about that. I think I might actually just power this up off my bench power supply directly. Uh, and then afterwards I'll just uh, put the thermal imaging camera and just see if it's uh, showing a hot component like, uh, you know, where the heat is. So I'm just going to leave that to sitting there smoking for a while. 
So um, yeah, a bit of a rough start I'm afraid with the power banks from Poundland. Uh, just really what happened with Pound World, the first ones weren't quite there yet, but um, having said that, the, the latter ones from Pound World were a bit better, still low capacity cells, but um, they had much better circuitry, they had a better chip. Uh, this chip looks fairly competent, uh, I like the fact that this chip has the proper shut off, uh, and if it turns out that it doesn't have a, I mean it, it can't have that, it can't draw 1.7 milliamps all the time, or this one, uh, this one here would have been flat out the packet because that's quite a lot of current, particularly if the starting power is, you know, capacity of the cell is that, 281 milliamp power. So, um, mixed thoughts, I'm going to have to continue doing these tests and I'll let you know in the description down below what I find out. So I whipped this one out the orange case and uh, did some tests and the current, the quiescent current of this one is closer to about 100 microamps and that does tally up with um, what I found on the internet that you know the typical standby current might be. 100 microamps is still quite high, I'd rather it was something lower like you know 5 or 10 microamps are doing better. 100 microamps is going to gradually cause these units to grad, you know, drain the battery slowly in storage. But it's still a lot better than the 1.7 milliamps this one seems to be drawing. And I have looked at it through a thermal imaging camera and it's not really showing any sort of, it's not showing hot capacitors. Well, having said that, 1.7 milliamps is quite low. I would have thought that I might get some thermal differential uh, effect though if there was a leaky capacitor. The only other thing I can think of doing is actually washing the circuit board off, maybe even just popping capacitors off, although that will potentially make the circuit unstable, so it's not going to provide very good uh, predictable results. I tried heating the capacitors with a little hot air gun, but it didn't result in the current going down. So I'm not sure what to make about that. Uh, interesting chip. I mean, it would be nice if, if it kind of, you know... If it works okay, it'd be nice if these cells were actually even near the 1,200 milliamp mark. Even 1,000 milliamp would be good. But uh, as at present, you know, I'm thinking maybe we'll wait and see what comes out next because I'm not overly enamoured at these ones. They're not really quite there yet. But you know what? They're a start.